Uh, we have the opening uh, ceremony here, which is entitled Space Ecosystem Significance for the Islamic World. You all realize that, you know, how important the space industry is. Right now, it stands at 350 billion U.S. dollar. Uh, it is projected to grow to one trillion, more than one trillion U.S. dollar in the next couple of decades. So to start off uh, uh, this uh, forum, I have the distinct pleasure to invite my Director General, Dr. Salim Al Malik, for delivering the welcome address. He has a degree in medicine, a postgraduate degree also in allergy and clinical immunology, and also one in pediatrics. Uh, he then obtained his uh, master's in health policy and management program from Harvard University. He has administrative fellowship, and he has uh, been the director general of FISESCO since 2019. Uh, his excellency was also served as the director uh, general of International Affairs Ministry of Education, Saudi Arabia, as well as its advisor, and the secretary general to the Saudi National Commission for Education, Science, and Cult Culture. Uh, and numerous other leading positions. Excellency, please deliver your welcome address. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-anbiya ayu al-mursaleem. Yaqul Allah ta'ala fi muhkami tanzeelih sanurihim ayatina fi al-afaq wa fi al-samai rizqakum wa ma tu'adun. Your Excellency, Dr. Abdul Latif Mirawi, Minister of Higher Education, Scientific Research, and Innovation in the Kingdom of Morocco. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I am pleased to welcome you all today at the launching ceremony of the ICESCO Global Space Science Forum, and I'm privileged to share my views on what space science means to ICESCO. The pandemic has disrupted many aspects of our lives. In global trade, supply chains, travels, and more importantly, in communications. They've all been reshaped. The way we live and work has been significantly altered. It has accentuated the digital necessity for the development of job opportunities and the entrepreneurial spirits in space science and technology for our, our young generation. Despite the technological advances humanity has made in the past few decades, which have led to the fast growth of a global economy, sustainable human development requires us to overcome many socioeconomic challenges. The United Nations have acknowledged these challenges in the form of 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Many of the solutions related to these challenges depends on our understanding of the planet Earth, in which space technology can play a major role. If we limit our existence to the planet Earth and continue to drain the resources on this planet, we will destroy the only home we have. Therefore, space exploration is a driving force for technology, economy, and our future. One main advantage of the knowledge that space science provides us is that it is non-invasive. This increases our capacity to repeatedly measure objectively and significantly at high speed, different global issue, thus generating the possibility to arrive at an equitable and fair decision-making process. The beneficial outcomes of these developments are sustainable socioeconomic gains in many areas, such as climate change management, sustainable food system, natural and man-made disaster crisis management, telehealth, remote education, and numerous others. Many of the direct results of space inventions, such as the internet, the camera sensor, GPS, we can now see and use in our daily needs. And this will continue to grow 
turning fiction into reality. Existing space science-based technologies are making communication channel faster than ever before. In addition, we can expect precision farming and efficient land water resource management to be developed as a result of this new technology. We can also expect cutting edge education and health technologies and facilities made available to the remotest places on earth. However, to achieve and sustain all these, we are required to invest more resources, especially in space science, and need to create awareness both at the level of the stakeholders and the policymakers to join hands for a common goal. <clears throat> we must do capacity building by training our young forces, especially women and girls. I would particularly encourage them to get involved in all these activities and make their marks in this ever-growing space science industry. Ladies and gentlemen, we at ICESCO are sparing no effort to promote scientific, educational, and cultural activities that support policymaking and the achievement of sustainable development goals in our member states. We're deeply involved in scientific, academic, and institutional networking coupled with outreach program that can generate and disseminate new knowledge. Our organization is focused in the adoption of modern technologies, acquisitions, and improvement of competencies at all levels, thereby fostering a technology-based economy and strengthening the resilience and preparedness in our member countries. For all these reasons, this Global Science Science Forum and all its outcome will generate guidelines for the future of space science in the ISIS member state. Over the next two days, you will be hearing from heads of space agencies, space science professionals, policymakers, field experts, and business people. But let me, before conclusion, give a special appreciation to our partners, the US Space Foundation, for their collaboration and their partnership. I look forward to discussion filled event with measurable outcomes that would bring space innovation and space science into our daily lives and homes, thus leading a sustainable economic development for a prosperity and better future together for mankind. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Now I would like to invite our special guest, Minister Abdul Latif Mirawi, who has recently been appointed as the Minister of Higher Education, Scientific Research, and Innovation at the Kingdom of Morocco. Your Excellency, the floor is yours. He doesn't need an introduction, but I know that he was the president of uh, Qazi Iyaz, and he is also being involved in many of uh, the technology and the artificial intelligence, science, and inventions. So welcome, Your Excellency. Thank you very much for this invitation. Uh, it's the first speech for me before, uh, before this, uh, this nomination. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, my friend. I will, I will uh, give my speech in Arabic, please. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wassalatu wassalamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad Ashraf al Mursali. Ma'ali Dr. Salim bin Muhammad al Malik, al Mudir al Am, the Munadamat al Alam al Islami. للتربية والعلوم والثقافة السيدات والسادة الوزراء السيد الأمين أمين سير الدائم للأكاديمية السيدات والسادة المدراء حضرات السيدات والسادة الأفاضل كل باسمه وصفته السلام عليكم إنه لمن دواعي سروري أن أتشرف اليوم بالمشاركة إلى جانب تلة من الشخصيات البارزة والعلماء والباحثين من الدول الأعضاء في منظمة الإيسيسكو ومن خارجها في أشغال منتدى الإيسيسكو العالمي لعلوم الفضاء في موضوع معا من أجل استكشاف مستقبل علوم الفضاء هذا المنتدى الذي يعرف مشاركة رفيعة المستوى سيكون مناسبة للمهتمين بمجال الفضاء لمناقشة المجهودات المبدولة من طرف الدول الأعضاء في الإيسيسكو لتطوير برامج الفضاء واستثمارها في التكوين والبحث العلمي والابتكار ولا يفوتني 
أن أنوه بهذه المناسبة بالعناية الفائقة التي توليها منظمة العالم الإسلامي للتربية والعلوم والثقافة لتطوير البحث العلمي والتكنولوجيا والابتكار وبالمجهوزات التي تسخرها للنهوض بمنظومة التعليم والبحث العلمي في جميع الدول العالم الإسلامي حضرات السيدات والسادة أيها الحضور الكريم يعتبر ميدان علوم وتكنولوجيا الفضاء من بين الميادين التي عرفت اهتماما كبيرا خلال السنوات الأخيرة من طرف مجموعة من الدول وخصوصا المتقدمة منها بحيث أصبح جزءا مهما من الخطط والاستراتيجيات الطويلة المدى لكل دولة كما أن المعلومات المستمدة من علوم الفضاء يمكنها أن تساهم بشكل كبير في تحسين جودة الحياة الإنسانية عبر ونذكر منها على سبيل المثال لا للحصر زيادة إنتاجية المحاصيل الزراعية واكتشاف مصادر جديدة للطاقة والمساهمة في المعالجة الآمنة والتخلص النهائي من النفايات وحماية ومراقبة البيئة في هذا الإطار تولي المملكة المغربية اهتماما بالغا لعلوم الفضاء وهو ما أهلها أن تنتقل من مرحلة متقدمة نحو امتلاك خبرة فضائية قوية ومتميزة وأن تمثل على الصعيد العالمي بخبراء دوليين يشغلون مناصب علمية مرموقة بوكالة الفضاء نازا كمثال كمل ودغيري وأسماء بوجبار وغيرهما وفي هذا الصدد فقد أطلق المغرب في سنة 2001 القمر الاصطناعي صناعي زرقاء اليمامة وفي 2017 محمد السادس ألف وفي 2018 محمد السادس باء ولعل هذه الأسماء خير دليل أن صاحب الجلالة الملك محمد السادس نصره الله وأيده يولي هذا المجال عناية خاصة إذ ستمكن هذه الأقمار من الاستطلاع ورصد الأرض والوصول إلى المعلومات بدقة متناهية كما يتيح رسم الخرائط والمسح الخرائطي والرصد الزراعي والوقاية من الكوارث الطبيعية ورصد التغيرات البيئية وظاهرة التصحر فضلا عن المراقبة الحدودية والساحلية وتسعى المملكة من خلال هذا التوجه إلى تعزيز استقلاليتها من خلال تطوير بنية تحتية تكنولوجيا متقدمة عالية الجودة لفائدة المراقبة الخرائطية عوض الاقتصار على التصوير الجوي أو طلب الصور من المورودين على المستوى الدولي كما يعمل المغرب على تعزيز موقعه القاري في هذا المجال من خلال احتضانه منذ سنة 1998 للمركز الإقليمي الإفريقي لعلوم وتكنولوجية الفضاء التابع للأمم المتحدة الذي يعمل كمنصة للتكوين في تقنيات الفضاء لصالح أطر وكوادر الدول الإفريقية الناطقة بالفرنسية والذي نهدف من خلاله إلى المساهمة في تعزيز التقنية للخبراء والأساتذة والباحثين والإداريين وصناع القرار في قارتنا حرية بالذكر أن هذه الاستباقية العلمية والتكنولوجية للمملكة المغربية تم تبنيها منذ سنة 1989 عندما أمر جلالته المغفور له الملك الحسن الثاني طيب الله تراه بإنشاء المركز الملكي للاستشعار عن بعد من أجل تطوير تطبيقات الاستشعار عن بعد والتكنولوجيات ذات الصلة على وجه الخصوص بالفلاحة وعلم المحيطات والموارد السمكية والتخطيط الترابي واستغلال الأراضي كما تجدر الإشارة أن الجامعة المغربية تلعب دورا كبيرا في تطوير هذا المجال عبر مشاريع غد عدة نذكر منها مشروع أبحاث الأقمار النانو صناعية الجامعية نانو ساتيليت الذي يروم تشجيع إحداث الأقمار النانو صناعية بالجامعة المغربية كما تتوفر جامعة القاضي عياد مراكش على مرصد أوكيمدن والذي أضحى من أهم البنى التحتية البحثية في الفيزياء الفلكية في أفريقيا ويتناول العديد من الموضوعات البحثية بما في ذلك علم الكواكب والأجسام الصغيرة للنظام الشمسي والأرصاد الجوية وعلوم الفضاء وغيرها وكان المرصد قد أعلن في فبراير 2021 عن اكتشاف ثلاثة كواكب خارجية تدور حول نجم يبعد عن المجموعة الشمسية بحوالي 400 سنة ضوئية 
أما في ميدان البحث العلمي فإن مشاركة المغرب القوية في تنفيذ المبادرات الأوروبية الإفريقية في مجال مراقبة الأرض راسخة حيث شكلت مشاركة الباحثين المغاربة في برامج FP7 Horizon 2020 Tiger Games قيمة مضافة علمية ومعترف بها دوليا أود أيضا أن أشير أن إلى أن المغرب منضو في اتحادين في شمال إفريقيا مرتبطين بهذا المجال ويضم ساتلين اثنين لاستقبال بيانات الأقمار الصناعية في الوقت الآني أيها الحضور الكريم في عصر الذكاء الاصطناعي والبيانات الضخمة فالعلوم الفضائية مجال محفز لتسريع رقمنة القطاعات الحيوية وإرصاء اقتصاد أخضر مستدام ومن هنا يتجلى أن الاهتمام بالبحث العلمي والتطور التكنولوجي خصوصا في ميدان علوم وتكنولوجية الفضاء يشكل واحدا من الرهانات الأساسية التي يجب أن يرتكز عليها التعاون العلمي التكنولوجي بين الدول الأعضاء في الإسيسكو هذا الاهتمام يشكل رافعة للتنمية الاقتصادية والاجتماعية فلا مناص له لهذه الدول في من مضاعفة الجهود في تعزيز التعاون في مجالات البحث والتطور التكنولوجي والابتكار في مجال الفضاء وخلق تكتلات تكنولوجية كفيلة بمواجهة التحديات المتعلقة بالأمن الغذائي وخفض معدلات الفقر والحد من مخاطر الكوارث الطبيعية والحفاظ على البيئة من جهة وبالاستفادة من مزايا التكنولوجيا المتاحة في مجال الفضاء لتحقيق أهداف التنمية المستدامة من جهة أخرى وفي الختام نطمح من خلال هذا المنتدى إلى تبادل الأفكار والتجارب وكل اليقين أنه سيتم بمناقشات هامة وثرية وتوصيات جوهرية بلا شك ما يدل على الاهتمام الذي نوليه جميعا لهذا الموضوع متعدد الأبعاد كما أجدد التزام بلدي الكامل بتعزيز الشراكة في هذا المجال والابتكار لما فيه صالح كوكبنا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Thank you very much, uh, Excellency. It's a very pertinent message. And, uh, you know, uh, we all need to realize that uh, space exploration is not just about uh, rocketry and all that. There's a whole ecosystem that needs to be developed. And His Excellency very pertinently pointed that out uh, to all of us. Uh, now we have, uh, you know, uh, the distinct pleasure of uh, introducing one of our co-organizers who are helping us develop this ecosystem in our, uh, in our member countries. We have with us Rear Admiral of U.S. Navy, uh, Thomas Zalibo. Uh, he is heading the Space Foundation, who are our co-organizer. Uh, Space Foundation is a nonprofit advocate organization, and they are involved in developing the global ecosystem since 1983. Uh, he has, uh, Admiral Zalibo has a broad and accomplished leadership and entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial background. He has been the chairman and CEO of Lightwave Logic, president and CEO of Flatterons Solutions, vice president of Science Applications International Corporation. He has been the member of Department of Homeland Security Space Systems uh, Critical Infrastructure Working Group, as well as a member of the Defense Innovation Board's Space Advisory Committee. He has led an esteemed military career where he has been the Director of Global Operations, Deputy for C4 Integration and Policy Develop uh, Department, and also the Director of Space Information Warfare Command and Control Division. Uh, he retired after a glorious career of 35 years as Rear Admiral and uh, Naval Ad uh, Aviator. Uh, we shall now hear Admiral Zelibo's uh, recorded message. Thank you. Good afternoon, and thank you for allowing me to be part of today's program to co-host this event. I also want to pass on my personal thanks to His Excellency, Director General of ICESCO, Dr. Al Malik, 
for his commitment to work with Space Foundation on this important initiative. Space Foundation is truly honored to be part of this partnership to help ICESCO continue to forge its vision to be a model in the areas of education, sciences, and culture for Muslim member countries. My only regret is not being able to be there in person with you this week, but hopefully that will be remedied during the upcoming ICESCO event in Cairo in December. Today, we live in an era not bound by traditional approaches, but rather new relationships with greater possibilities. That is not just among countries, but also companies, communities, and cultures. With 85 countries and thousands of companies now operating in and working with space and space technologies, and more seeking to take their place in the most dynamic of economies and workforces, all of us can seek new partnerships who share not just curiosity, but also the drive to explore new horizons to do bold things together. Several weeks back at our annual space symposium, the Director General and I did a virtual signing of a partnership agreement between our two organizations. During that virtual program, I shared with him that when you open a door and invite someone into a relationship or offer someone a chance, the possibilities are truly endless. When you do those things with someone who has a shared vision for the future and for their fellow citizens, you can't help but feel excited about where this relationship can go. The program that is unfolding over the next few days will offer you spirited dialogue and engagement, which are also two of the ingredients that are driving the $447 billion global space economy today. While the public will always think of rockets and astronauts when they think of space, the truth about what is happening with space is driving innovation for life here on Earth. Let me explain. Without space, we could not begin to understand the effects or impacts of climate change, a challenge no country or continent is immune from. Without space, Commerce that creates jobs, builds economies, and invests in technologies that shape daily life would not be possible. Without space, no critical infrastructure anywhere could operate or fulfill its services or responsibilities to citizens. Without space, security as well as preparations for communities from weather events and natural hazards or military and cyber threats would not be possible. But with space, all these things and much more are possible. The agenda you encounter over the coming days will inform and inspire you by introducing you to some of the world's leading experts and authorities who have not just shaped solutions to some of the challenges I just mentioned, but also can help you create opportunities and deliver earthly benefits and rewards back home where they belong. Unfortunately, there are some leaders that see what we do by investing precious resources and energies in space activities as taking away those same precious resources and energies from addressing the challenges that every country and community face. I would argue that the investments of resources and energies in these pursuits are the exact same catalysts that will drive and create solutions we all want and need for our planet, our countries, and our communities. It should not be a question of one path versus another. Rather, it's a question of how we work together to create understanding, build relationships, and address challenges that are far more common to one another than we may have previously realized. If you look around the room, and the various screens that transmit this week's program, you will see people you may have never encountered before, but they are all here because they believe in and want the same things you do. They are the partners you have not yet met, but they are also the partners who have declared their interest and availability to work with others to create access and opportunity because at no other time in our shared history have the conditions for progress been this welcoming and promising? There are plenty of organizations that are skilled at declaring and defining the world's problems, 
but very few that have the courage to convene solution makers and invite others to the table. ICESCO is one of those few, and Space Foundation is grateful for the relationship we are forging with you to bring solutions to fruition. But solutions, like strategies, cannot be successful if they are individual pursuits. It will take teams, partnerships, and diverse relationships to become the foundational bedrock from which everything begins. My challenge to you with this week's program is to find and connect with like-minded partners that are part of this assembly. ICESCO has already distinguished itself as the assembly point for over 50 member nations, sharing pursuits in education, science, and culture. Space transcends all of those areas and will be the most dominant and inspirational driver for those 50 plus countries and the hundreds of others around the world that are also seeking their place with space. Today, the global space ecosystem is primed for growth and expansion but only if we commit to the steps that ensure ecosystem sustainability. They include expanding the diversity of people in the space community, preparing a skilled and knowledgeable workforce with room for all, balancing smart investments with sound policies to enable entrepreneurship, innovation, and opportunity, and finally, building systemic resiliency to preserve the safety and security of space infrastructure and operations. This week's agenda will address all those points. For as much as I enjoy declaring there is no better time to be part of the global space ecosystem, none of you could be in any better place than being part of this week's program. It is time well spent. So again, I welcome you as we explore the future of space science together and find even more ways to explore, learn, and be the difference maker to our shared understanding of our universe. Thank you and have a great week. Uh, thank you, Admiral Zalbor. Uh, I think uh, he made uh, the real gist of what and why we are holding this forum. And uh, uh, to develop a whole ecosystem, it's very, very pertinent and important. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Dame Simonetta Di Pippo, and she is the director of United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs. Uh, she leads uh, the UNOSA's strategic policy and program, program activities, space affairs. She's a space affairs advisor to UN Secretary General. She has a master's in astrophysics and master's in space physics. Uh, she then received an honorary degree in environmental sciences and honorary doctorate in international affairs. Prior to UNOSA, uh, Dame Pippo served as the director of human space flight, European Space Agency, as the director of observation uh, space uh, Flight Italian National Space Agency, as an academician of IAA, as a member co-chair of World Economic Forum Global Future Council on Space Technologies, and a co-founder in Women in Aerospace of Europe. Uh, Dame Pippo was knighted by the Italian president in 2006, and she received a Hubert Curie Award in 2018, and she was the first woman laureate to receive this award. Now, the next point which I'm going to tell you about is so interesting, and it is not often that we come across people uh, after whom an asteroid is named. And Dame Pippo's uh, asteroid uh, that was named after her for her numerous services in space exploration and all that is the asteroid 21887 D. Pippo. Please deliver your keynote address, uh, which is titled Space Technology Applications, Bringing Space to Earth. Distinguished audience, allow me first to thank the organizers for extending the invitation to address this Global Space Science Forum. It is an honor for me to be with you. Space science has a long legacy. From the signals of the first satellite and humans on the moon to landings on celestial bodies in our neighborhood, 
and even crossing the borders of the solar system. Our journey in orbit and beyond is one to marvel about. And in the process of reaching for the stars, we have come to discover the true transformative power of outer space. Satellites of so many different sizes, a lower orbit and beyond, have altered the very way of life of modern civilization. In some countries, space assets underpin as much as 15% of the GDP, and the value of the sector is growing every year. And they are critical in the quest towards achieving a sustainable future. Precision agriculture, disaster risk reduction, water management, improved efficiency across the board of industries. The list of benefits is almost impossible to pin down, and it will only grow as more and more applications and services come online. Even in addressing the global pandemic of COVID-19, satellites have proven irreplaceable. Remote work, telehealth, telemedicine, contact tracing, all would become much more challenging, if not impossible, without space assets. And what about the state of our planet? Satellites provide a unique perspective. Gathering data that are global, uniform, and regularly repeated facilitates the visualization of changes and impacts, awareness raising, and informed decision making. This is vital for climate science and action. In fact, over 50% of the essential climate variables depend on satellite measurements. All of this establishes a strong argument for investing into space technologies. The space community has come a long way. Billions around the world are already benefiting from space assets, yet much remains to be done. A significant portion of the global population is lagging behind. As a public good, the outer space environment represents a shared resource. Everyone must be able to benefit from it without discrimination of any kind, not just today, but also tomorrow. We, the space community, have the responsibility to tackle the space divide. As a capacity builder, UNOSA strives to build an inclusive a universally accessible space ecosystem, devising projects and initiatives to serve the UN member states at large. In recent years, Kenya, Guatemala, and Mauritius became space-faring nations with the support of UNUSA and its partners. And we are constantly exploring new pathways to expand these efforts. At the same time, we are facilitating the investments of political capital at the multilateral level while democratization and intensification of space activities carry the promise of a better future, it cannot lead us astray from the sustainability perspective. We must remain vigilant about the viability of future operations. It is imperative for the future of our civilization that we avoid the tragedy of the common in outer space. With the increasing orbital density we tread on dangerous grounds. Sustainability, safety, and security of space operations must be in the purview in every action we take. Only in this manner we can guarantee that progress today does not impede prosperity tomorrow. Dear participants, the future of space science is certainly bright, and so is the future of humanity if we act in space smartly and in an appropriate manner. I'm enthusiastic about the process in the sector all around the world, including in the Islamic countries. I wish everyone best of luck in their decisions moving forward and in building successful and thriving space industries. And I can assure you that UNUSA stands ready to support you in this journey. Thank you very much, uh, Dame uh, De Pepo. Uh, I now have the honor to introduce to you Professor Dr. Pascal Aaron Freud, who is the president of International Astronomical Federation. Uh, Dr. Uh, Aaron Freud has a master's in molecular biology and a PhD in astrophysics. Uh, she then received a master's in management and leadership. She's a fellow of the European Space Agency, and she worked 
uh, for the Space Agency at the Leiden Observatory. Uh, she is a professor of astrobiology at the University of Amsterdam and also at the University of Leiden. Uh, she is a distinguished uh, visiting scientist at the Jet Propulsion uh, Laboratories in Pasadena, US. Uh, she was a PI and team leader at ESA and NASA, astronomy and planetary missions, and also on experiments in low Earth orbit and also at the International Space Station. She is currently a professor at the George Washington University and a president of the Austrian Fund on Space, uh, chair of the executive board German Aerospace Center, and her interests are supporting and facilitating global space governance stimulating global space economy, influencing and fostering global space advocacy. And ladies and gentlemen, it is not often that in a conference you have two people who, after whom a celestial body has been named. Uh, Dame Di Pepo I already told about, and Professor Aaron Freud has the asteroid 9826, Aaron Freud 2114T3 named after her. So it's indeed an honor to have, us, uh, have her here with us. Uh, her talk is titled Space Science Applications and IAF ISU. Professor, please deliver your talk. Dear Excellency, dear participants, I'm Pascal Ehrenfreund and I'm the president of the International Astronautical Federation and the president of the International Space University ISU. Thank you very much for inviting me to address the distinguished delegates of ISESCO's Global Space Science Forum, exploring the space science future together. Today, we rely increasingly on space assets for our economy and many other aspects of our everyday lives. Space is key for a better understanding of our planet Earth, climate change, and for supporting the world's overall socio-economic development in the years to come. We recognize more and more that space applications are part of our daily lives. Earth observation satellites, telecommunication satellites, and navigation satellites are essential in the functioning of modern society. Climate change is already affecting the entire world with extreme weather conditions such as drought, heat waves, fires, heavy rain and floods. Through Earth observations, we monitor the Earth's surface, the atmosphere and oceans, and their changes to better understand the Earth's system and to monitor the influence of human activities. The evolving space economy with new and emerging space countries is developing a vibrant commercial and public space sector with new unprecedented entrepreneurial leadership and private investment, offering nations and professionals exciting future perspectives. And we are all living in a very dynamic area of space exploration with, for instance, the HOPE mission from the United Arab Emirates currently orbiting Mars. At this event, you will explore further opportunities available in the space ecosystem and support the efforts of ISESCO's 54 member states to advance space programs and the use of space technology in education, science and innovation in developing countries. For 70 years, the International Astronautical Federation has been continuously working to connect the entire space community, overcoming political and geographical boundaries, and to focus on common goals and endeavors. With more than 400 members from 71 countries worldwide, the IAF can count on an extraordinarily strong network of space experts. And presently, the space economy is expanding and becoming increasingly global with numerous space activities and innovative technologies emerging around the world. So international cooperation is really crucial. We have to encourage young people and in particular women to contribute to innovation that will define the future that we offer the next generation. At the International Space University, 
the sole university devoted to space education worldwide and headquartered in Strasbourg, France, we train and educate the next generation of space professionals from all over the world in all aspects and areas of space activities. ISU has also interdisciplinary educational space programs all around the world. ISU has more than 5,200 alumni from 110 countries, including many ISESCO countries. But for the future, we will need a well-trained workforce to enter the dynamic space sector that supports the global space economy, enables exciting space exploration endeavors, opens new markets for space application, and addresses global challenges to the benefit of citizens on Earth. Dear Excellency, dear participants, International cooperation in the space sector is seen as an important factor to share costs, eliminate duplication and exploit worldwide expertise to develop innovative technologies. Space services and applications are meanwhile an important backbone of our economies, our society, necessary for a sustainable development and are connecting more and more to the non-space sector. They are also a way to inspire our youth to study STEM disciplines and to look forward uh, to the future with ambitions and confidence. I know that you will discuss several of these topics and I wish you a very successful conference.